So gang, today I am coming at you speaking about a issue that I think is relative to all of us. I mean, hey, it's relevant to all of us, excuse me. It's relevant to all of us. However, I'm really wanting to speak to people of color with this particular episode. I titled it Reversing the Cultural Rage. Did y'all get that? Reversing cultural rage. Let me tell you how God hit me this week. In my time of prayer and devotion and sitting there listening to the Lord, I looked at Colossians. I was led to Colossians chapter three. I'm going to read some select verses out of here. And of course, you guys know how we do this. This is a conversation. So I'm going to read and talk at the same time. All right. Verse eight, Colossians chapter three. But now you yourselves are to put off all of these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Here's where I'm hitting yet, sons and daughters, brothers and sisters renewed, renewed. Those of us who are in Christ need to understand something. And that is we can no longer operate in the rage, the anger, the wrath, the malice that we had operated in just because of some injustice. You see, at the end of the day, the injustice wasn't necessarily just against a particular people. The injustice is really against the image of God. Did you get that? And if we're going to move past this period, then we're going to have to become culturally relevant to what the new move of God is. For instance, we continue to see the increase, if you will, of interracial marriages and relationships people crossing cultural lines because they are finding love in the person, not in the culture. Did y'all get that? They're finding love in the person and not in the culture. Interesting statistic came out. The statistic said that church attendance for the first time among African-Americans dropped by a total of 15 to 20 percent. Now, where did the biggest drop come from? The biggest drop came from young millennials and generation Intel or the I generation, as they called it. Those are those cats 35 and under. Let's just go ahead and call it what it is. And why did the attendance drop for the first time among the African-American communication um, community? Because they are looking for fellowship and churches that are more diverse. Did you get that? In other words, we can't be so exclusive that we don't include those who are different than we are. The gospel was never, if you will, presented in a way that everybody couldn't get it. It never was. It has always been multicultural from the very beginning. God has been multicultural. Well, you know, we could do some scripture lessons here and we can see it that way. But here's the deal. I want to stay in Colossians because I think the conversation is relevant from here. If we can accept that there's diversity in our television programming, in our social media platforms, in our corporate arenas, then we have to be able to accept that there should be diversity in our churches. Now, I want to go ahead and put this out here. And that is, is that they got to love who you are, not who you wish to be. Did y'all get that one? Yeah, they got to love who you are, not who you wish to be. So if they can love who you are, that means you don't have to change you. They accept you. And I think what we have done in our church arena is that we have tried to get people to be multicultural in our buildings without being without being truly embracing in our person. 
we want people from different colors and different creeds and well, not different creeds, but different colors, different ethnicities, different cultures to come into our building just so we can say that we are diverse. But that's not being diverse. Diverse says that I'm going to love who you are, not who I hope that you would be. Back in the day, mom and them is to have a saying, you know, if they can't use our comb, don't bring them home. Y'all remember that one? If they can't use our comb, don't bring them home. But that is no longer how we're rolling in the 21st century. I'm just trying to tell y'all at this point it's like, hey, you know, how many different combs can you have in the house? Watch what God says. You know, he says this is all about putting on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. There is a intellectualism to this thing. Once you know who your creator is, then you love the creation. Now, I talked about that today when I was preaching and pursuing my passion, but I, I, I got to go ahead and bring it home again here. Once you know who your creator is, how do you hate the creation when the creator created the creation? He says in Colossians chapter three, there is neither Greek nor Jew circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Now, I'm not saying that there's not a diversity of styles. There's not a diversity of, you know, um, textures and things of this nature because we are different, but there is a unity. And we got to reverse the cultural rage of thinking that someone has got to get down like us to be accepted by us. Nah. Or that someone has to placate our rage. Nah. Or we get we can't continue to play a card of victimization. And then on the other side, we're going to claim that we got victory. You know, those two don't go together. Here's the deal. The deal is. Is that, yeah, we we understand that people have loved, if you will, uh, African-American or people of color culture without loving the people. But then on the other side, the people of color, are we not, you know, kind of holding that as a badge? Or are we not trying to put a chip on our shoulders and, yeah, this is how you've been treating us. But at the same time, how are we treating them? Are you with me? Are we embracing them? Yeah, we've been forced to learn a certain history, but it doesn't mean that we have embraced a certain person. I need for y'all to feel that, you know, in all of us, we carry some type of emotional heaviness, constantly looking for, uh, if you will, we're constantly looking for a, a vindication. <laughs> yeah, we're looking for a vindication. Look, we don't have to be vindicated. We just have to be victorious. Let me keep on. The elect and holy beloved put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. So even if we do have a complaint, that doesn't mean that we don't have to forgive. You see, as long as I'm not forgiving, then I can be enraged. I want somebody to embrace me, but I don't necessarily have to embrace them. Are y'all feeling that? I'm talking about reversing the cultural rage. Back in the day, uh, mama used to let people come over to dinner. You know how that goes, man. Them old school. That's that old school where you come over for dinner and, you know, you bring with you, you know, uh, a dish or two. And everybody put their dish on the table. And we would just dip, you know. We wasn't asking well, who cooked that? We didn't look at it like, well, you know, they don't put no salt in their food. You see, that's cultural rage. We got to reverse that. Or they got cats in their house. <laughs> Y'all ain't with me, man. Y'all ain't with me. Let me go ahead. But, but, but we, you know, that, that in and of itself, that's that cultural rage that we want vindicated. We want somebody to validate that there was a wrong. Yeah, there was a wrong, but here's the deal. Are we going to put on the tender mercies? Are we going to have the kindness, the humility, the long suffering? Are we going to bear one another and truly forgive one another? 
Yeah, we got a complaint, but God got a complaint against you. Y you want God's forgiveness. So you got to extend that forgiveness to others. He says, above all things, what? Uh, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop there, man. I can go on talking about the new man. But put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And most of our day to day experiences, guess what? We're not experiencing, if you will, uh, overt racism. So why is it that I'm not going to love that brother? Why is it that I'm going to speak about them differently behind their back than I do in front of them? You know why? Because I haven't for, I haven't truly forgiven. Maybe if I truly forgive and reverse the cultural rage, I can truly embrace. So let me tell you this right now. I want to tell everybody, you know, hey, yo, we embrace you here. We embrace you in this ministry. We embrace you. We want to, if you will, equip you and then encourage you to help somebody else. We all are trying to get there. We all are trying to be in the image of the one who created us. That's what it's all about. So let me give some practical, some practicality. And then I got to get up out of here. You know, man, my man swag is letting me know that it's time to roll out. Have the dialogue over lunch. How about this? They might not have known it, but ask them for their forgiveness as much as they're asking for yours. I did that this week. I called a brother who was in the ministry and I said, look, man, I, hey, man, forgive me. I'm heavily convicted. Forgive me. And so there was that forgiveness going on there. So that's one or two ways that you can practically work this thing out. You start the dialogue. You ask for forgiveness about the hostility that you have held on the inside. Yet that person hasn't done anything against you or to you begin to reverse the cultural rage. I'm not asking you to ignore racism. I'm asking you to not allow racism to imprison you reverse that cultural rage. Hey, once again, you know what? It's been live. Um, I really appreciate your time. Appreciate you tuning in. This is pastor Cedric C. Maddox. We're coming at you with life's moments. Okay. Not only that, check us out behind the mask Monday through Friday, 10 a.m., two to three minutes just to give you a little pep me up. Of course, right now we are um, having recordings on Saturday for worship at 10 a.m. Facebook Live. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. May he be gracious unto you. Until the next time, we'll holler.